When it comes to astronomy and space, most people are happy to accept the science and accept what the experts say. After all, they've spent their working lives studying it. However, some people like to just ignore that and come up with their own explanations. Seriously, you don't want to miss this one. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, and appropriately with a video about astronomy and the stars, I want to thank the sponsors of today's video, Star Trek Fleet Command. Star Trek Fleet Command is a free to play, open world MMO game in which you command a star base on the front lines of the Star Trek universe. You can construct fleets of your favorite ships, recruit legendary officers to crew them, and pursue your goals of expanding territory, exterminating rivals, exploiting resources, and exploring strange new worlds. And the Borg are back in new missions inspired by their iconic appearances in Star Trek The Next Generation. Join fan favourite Hugh the Borg and help him stop a scientist's quest for revenge against the Collective. Save an eager pack led from himself as he tries to get the Borg to assimilate him on purpose and prevent the Borg from assimilating your technology behind your AI assistant Maya. And introducing Fleet Commanders, a new feature to Star Trek Fleet Command, which allows players to assign well-known Star Trek heroes and villains to oversee strategy from their star bases for increased power and effectiveness in the game. Fleet Commander launches with three choices. Admiral James T. Kirk, Captain Spock, or Locutus of Bork, and build the command center a new star-based location in which to manage your fleet commanders. Star Trek Fleet Command is available for free on iOS, Android, and Windows. Download now by using my link below, or scan the QR code and join the fight. Right, back to today's video, which is from a YouTube channel called The Messenger. Now he has his own views on some astronomical phenomena which need correcting. Shall we see what he's got to say? Yeah, come on, let's do it. Here we go. It's George. And I'm back again, and I'm here to explain how the 1833 meteor shower happened. It's not the way that everybody seems to think. Like all the experts told you it's just happened this way. Well, I'm going to explain to you because I've been researching this and I've been going back and looking up stuff. So the 1833 meteor shower was an exceptionally rare event. This particular shower in 1833 was the Leonids meteor shower caused by the Earth passing through the debris left by the comet Temple Tuttle. Now, the comet Temple Tuttle has an orbital period of around 33 years. So every 33 years, as the comet gets closer to the sun, it leaves a fresh tail of debris. Now, it just so happened that in 1833 the comet had just passed and there were some very dense meteoroid concentrations within the dust tail. To have over tens of thousands of meteors visible per hour, depending on the location of the observer, of course. Now, this happened again in the meteor storm of 1966, again with up to 10,000 meteors per hour visible. Now, we know exactly what causes these meteor showers and why we get them every 33 years or so. Now, here we'll go to all the pictures. All these are different pictures that people who saw the 1833 meteorite shower, they drew or they painted. Now, obviously without cameras back then, this was the best they could do. And a lot of them would have been from memory. Now from witness accounts, it sounds like there were so many meteors that it looked like raining stars were falling. Okay, now everybody's seeing, but every picture is basically the same. It shows the meteorites or the meteors, it shows the meteors coming straight down toward Earth. But there's one picture that really caught my attention. It's this one up here in the corner. If you look co closely at this, everybody said it came from one point in the sky up there. Now, I'm trying to figure out how they say that it was, it was a collision. The 1833 comet hit its own tail from 1800 that it left behind. Yes, this is true. As you can see from this graphic here, the 1833 tail went straight through the 1800 tail from the last orbit. Now this caused that intense accumulation of meteoroids. 
And I'm trying to figure this out and I, it just doesn't seem to make sense. This picture right here to me resembles a firework. Well, all meteor showers and storms do originate from a certain point in the sky. The Leonids because that point is in the constellation of Leo. But this is all just a trick of perspective. Now they're traveling parallel, but much like a train track where it widens as you get closer to it, the same thing happens with the meteors. When it goes up in the sky and it explodes, there's one center point and everything branches out. Interesting that George is taking just one drawing from over 150 years ago, where there were hundreds more drawings of that event from the same period. Okay, with that being said, with that being said, I'm going to go through and explain what I think happened. Okay, we're going to go down to the picture. This is what I think happened. We had the comet, which was the Temple Tunnel Comet come in. Okay? It has a, it has a path to where it would pass by the Earth. Okay. Bear with me for a second. We are bearing with you, and I get it so far. Slightly out of scale, the Temple Tuttle Comet is only 3.6 kilometers across, but that's okay. This is what I think happened, okay? I think there were two comets. I think there were two comets. Now, I will explain this to you. In 2022, the comet Leonard and Panstars both disintegrated passing the Earth. Okay, in 2016, there was a twin comet flyby. 252P linear and P2016BA14. They went by the Earth. It was, a, it, was, it was like a rare event, a twin comet path. Now, it's named twin, but they were actually separated by quite a bit. One passed Earth by about 3 million miles, and then the next one shortly after passed by about 2 million miles. That's about 9 or 10 times the distance to the moon. Not really a flyby. Okay. Now, the exoplanet hunting satellite Tess caught sight of a comet outburst. And I'm going to go into that, what that is. And this is, this is from a, a NASA release. I got this information from NASA. Okay, we're going to go back down to the picture. Okay, what I believe happened is the Temple Tunnel Common here, it did its thing, okay? It passed across here. And at some point after it had passed... There was another comet that had came by. And I'm not so sure what there might have been three comets out there in the sky. Because there was a Mexican astronomer who said there was a comet that had disintegrated before the Temple Tunnel had passed. But people don't want to believe what other people say. No, they don't, you are right, but this seems a bit far-fetched. Now, you've indicated in your drawing there that the comets appear to collide just above our mesosphere. But the closest ever recorded approach of a comet is around 3.4 million kilometers. I'm afraid what you're suggesting, whilst remotely possible, has never happened that close to Earth. You also need to take into account that the comet Temple Tuttle has been on the exact same orbit as it had been back then in 1833. If it would have collided with something, it would be different. If, if it's the case and there was two or three comets, you get the one pass, the Temple Tuttle, your meteor shower starts. Okay, this comet comes along and it fragments above the other meteorite's path. And if there was a third one that had already disintegrated, there's a huge debris pile there. Now, if this comet came along, which I suspected, and had a comet outburst, it is a brilliant explosion. 
bad way to say this. A comet outburst is an intense release of gas, dust and ice. Not really explosive, but still a pretty bright sight. It's like a firework. It would have lit up the whole sky. Everybody would have been able to see it. Which brings me to another point. They said in the 1833 meteor shower, 100,000 meteorites per hour. Some say 50,000, 200,000. And then at one point they said 240,000. If a comet outburst happened, which is a big explosion like a firework on top of the meteorite shower that was already in progress, you would have had all sorts of debris coming toward Earth. I love George's enthusiasm for this, I really do, but unfortunately there's no evidence to suggest that this has happened. The current explanation works at the moment, and to back it up we had 1966 with the same reasons. And this is what the point that I'm trying to get across to people. When the mesosphere becomes bombarded with so much debris at once, it malfunctions. It can drop the temperature with noctiluscent clouds. It can drop the temperature maybe three times or maybe more colder than what it is. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Maybe another one of George's theories. And it will have a hard time creating friction with a super cold temperature. Well, air friction can be affected by air temperature, but not to the point where it's non-existent. Now, you as a human being know how hard it is to stay warm. And the colder it gets, the harder it is to stay warm. Okay, that would explain the increase from 50 to 100,000 to 240,000 meteorites coming through. A comet outburst would have showered the earth with rocks and it would have done it at a downward path not across the sky like this meteorite okay this comet right here this path right here that would have been normal it would have been sucked into the earth's gravitational pull at normal speeds yes unfortunately george doesn't understand how comets or meteor showers work shame really still Nice to see his alternate theory. Well, there we go, a nice look at George there and his meteor shower explanations. He does have a good channel, which we probably will have a look at again in the future. So all that's left for me to do today is say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing. Uh, we are almost at 470,000 subscribers, only 30,000 to go. Uh, and of course, if you really, really liked it, hit that like button too. Just enough time to once again thank Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring today's video. Remember, Star Trek Fleet Command is free to play on iOS, Androids and Windows. Just click my link in the description or scan the QR code to join the fight. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a cracking week and I'll see you all on Friday for the return of Phuket Word. Yes, I know you can't wait for that one. See you then. <laughs>